This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 52. You Can't Outrun Your Fork by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Health Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in health, fitness, and nutrition five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey, it's Tuesday, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily. I'm Dr. Neil Mallett, reading you some of the most popular health and fitness blogs out there, with author permission, of course. Today, I'm reading to you a post from Nerd Fitness, which is a super popular fitness blog. Now, before we get into it, if you're new here, then you probably don't know that I answer your questions right here on the show every Friday. So if you have a diet, nutrition, fitness, or stress management question, just come by our website, oldpodcast.com, and you can send in an audio question. Or if it's easier, you can call in. The number is 61 I Love OHD. Now there's a really good chance I'll answer it. Plus, you'll be entered into a small special raffle just for sending in an audio question. Before we get into Steve's post, here's my quote for the day. 80% of how we look and how we feel is diet related. Dr. Mayaki, a well-known nutrition researcher. All right, let's get the show going and start optimizing your life. You Can't Outrun Your Fork by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Whenever I talk to people about how to get in shape, all they want to talk about is what to do in the gym to look better and feel better. I tell them I only get three hours a week in the gym. They have the other 165 hours a week to either stay on track or fall off the wagon. Regardless of what you do or who you want to look like, Diet is far and away the most important thing you need to take care of before you have a chance in hell at getting in shape. Two truths. Number one, if you're overweight, you need to make significant changes to your diet if you want to get in shape. Truth number two, if you're skinny and want to bulk up, you need to make significant changes to your diet. When you break down weight loss into its most basic elements, you need to burn more calories than you consume. Sounds simple, right? Have you ever really stopped to think about how easy it is to eat 100 calories and how hard it is to burn 100? It's a simple math equation, so you can't really fudge the numbers like an Enron accountant. You either burn more than you eat or eat more than you burn. I'm gonna share with you some information to help drive that point home. After factoring what you normally eat, if you eat or drink any of these other things on top of what you normally eat, you're gonna see how difficult it is to burn off those extra calories. For example, one can of Coke is 100 calories and requires running a mile to burn off. Two Krispy Kreme donuts is 400 calories and requires 40 minutes of easy bike riding. One McDonald's Big Mac is 540 calories and requires 38 minutes of jumping rope. A large order of French fries and Coke is 800 calories and requires 50 minutes on an elliptical. The Taco Bell Fiesta salad and a Coke is 1,000 calories and requires an hour of full court basketball. A large McDonald's McFlurry, an order of small fries, is 1,200 calories and requires swimming laps for two hours. What the F? And Domino's Bread Bowl is 1,500 calories and requires running a half marathon. Now what do you hear? Some of these numbers aren't exact, but they're pretty close. I kept the numbers even to keep things simple. Let's say you eat two donuts for breakfast, hit up Domino's for lunch, grab some fries and a drink from McDonald's on the way home, and then eat a Taco Bell Fiesta salad. Hey, it's a salad. It's good for me, right? That's a full day of calories. Now, you do need to factor in your basal metabolic rate, which is how many calories you burn just to exist. If you eat 3,500 calories a day, thank you, Bread Bowl, and you burn 2,000 for your basal metabolic rate, that means you practically need to run a half marathon to even things out. Now let's say you eat normal meals, but just go a little bit over budget, like an extra 250 calories every day, and don't burn that off, then you're looking at an extra 25 pounds of extra weight each year. Here's the math. 250 extra calories per day, which is about a half of extra pound of body fat per week. Remember last week's post about using common sense? See if you can justify to yourself having to run a half effing marathon because you ate an extra 1,500 calories worth of crap today. Drink a six-pack of Coke while working? That's fine. 
Just start running till you've burned them off. Calories in, calories out. That equation isn't changing. So unless you have hours and hours to dedicate to fitness, why not make a change or two to your diet? Sacrifice the 10 minutes of bliss you get from a McFlurry and start losing weight immediately. I can only dedicate an hour or less to fitness every day, which means I need to watch what I eat. And I'm fine with that. You just listened to the post titled, You Can't Outrun Your Fork by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. I really like that Steve mentioned that his numbers aren't necessarily exact. When we factor in how many calories you're going to burn when you're exercising, we have to look at a number of different factors. Your height, your weight, your current level of fitness, your age, and lots, lots more. If you really want to know those numbers, a well-educated health professional can definitely help you. But his message overall is correct. Before you take in those extra 100, 150, or 200 calories, think about it first. Going a little bit overboard on your calories every day begins to add up, and we don't even think about it. Let me give you another example. The holidays are soon going to be upon us. This is always a tough time for folks that are trying to lose weight. They want to participate in all the wonderful activities, and they want to enjoy those wonderful and tasty dishes that everyone else gets to have. And so they'll justify their eating with, well, it's only once a year. Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, it only comes around once a year, so I should be able to indulge. What I tell them in response is, let's look at the rest of the holidays. Now, because I live in the U.S., I'm going to use U.S. holidays. If we begin at the very first of the year in January, we have New Year's Day. How do many of us celebrate the new year? With food and alcohol. And we usually don't portion out exactly how much we want to eat or how much alcohol we want to drink. And chances are, we're not reaching for that vegetable plate either. So most likely, it's going to be food that's calorie-dense, and alcohol, which is also calorie-dense, is going to bring up those calories for the day really, really quickly. But you're right, it's only once a year. But let's fast-forward really quickly and jump to the next holiday. Here in the U.S., we celebrate Martin Luther King Day, which is around the 19th of January. Many folks use this Monday holiday as an excuse to, again, eat a little bit more, relax, and maybe drink a little bit more too. Jumping past that, we've got Super Bowl Sunday. For those of you that aren't aware, the Super Bowl is American football's biggest event. It's the very last game of the season, and it's practically like a holiday out here. What are the types of foods we like to consume when we're watching American football? It ain't salad, pizza, wings, definitely booze, ranch dip, You name it. If it's calorie dense, it's going to be at a Super Bowl party. If you're the one bringing the salad or the veggie tray, you're probably going to get kicked out. Next holiday, Valentine's Day. Celebrate with food and booze. Next one, St. Patrick's Day. Food and booze. Easter, lots and lots of food. Memorial Day, also a U.S.-based holiday. We tend to barbecue. It's the start of the summer. Oh, and let's not forget we're going to drink. Then American Independence Day, July 4th. Barbecue, booze. Labor Day in September, same thing. It's now the end of summer, but we're going to celebrate the exact same way with a lot of food and a lot of alcohol. Halloween, candy galore, food and more alcohol. Thanksgiving, of course, lots and lots of food. And then we get into the holiday season, whether you're celebrating Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, Diwali, you name it. There's going to be a lot of food. Are you catching my drift? Yes, it's once a year. But if we start adding up all of these little holidays and we keep saying to ourselves, oh, Valentine's Day only comes around once a year. Oh, the Super Bowl only comes around once a year. All of a sudden, it becomes a pattern. And I haven't even mentioned any anniversaries or birthday celebrations or anything else in between. So what may seem like a rare occasion, when we look at the whole picture, starts to look like a real pattern of behavior. So what Steve mentioned in his post was absolutely right. Take a moment and decide whether you really want and need those extra calories. Now, once again, if you have any question related to health and fitness or your diet and nutrition, come by our website, oldpodcast.com, to submit an audio question. Or simply call 61 I Love OHD. Not only is there a good chance that your question will be answered right here on the show, but you'll also be entered into special raffles to win books and more. Now tomorrow, I'll be reading a post from Good Life Zen, so I'll see you there where your optimal life 
awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.